learn about the axillary crutch. This is the axillary crutch. Now let's see the parts of axillary crutch. The upper part, this which is padded, is called as axillary pad. This part, this portion. Then comes as two uprights which are going down and then ultimately they are turning up into a single upright. So two double uprights uh, and turning into a single upright. And in between you have, this is called as hand piece, okay. And at the bottom, this is called as a rubber fury. Okay? Now let's look at um, the uh, certain points which we are supposed to consider uh, before uh, using this axillary crutch. So how to position this axillary crutch? So axillary crutch should be a little bit lateral uh, to the uh, patient who is standing. Uh, the person who is using it, the axillary pad should be below the axilla. It should not be dipping into the axilla. It should be below the axilla, apex of the axilla, 5 cm below. Okay? And it should be resting against the chest. So the patient is going to actually press it, the axillary pad against the chest. And then the hand piece, we are going to hold or grip the hand piece here. And uh, elbow should be little bit flexed. So the position of the hand piece should be such that the elbow is in uh, five degree, uh, 15 degrees of the flexion and this 15 degrees of the flexion is going to help us for the weight transmission. So now let's learn how the weight transmission occurs. So when you are using the axillary crutch, you are going to put the crutch in the front then as you are going to take the weight over the axillary crutch, the weight is actually transferring from the upper limb to the hand piece and from the hand piece to the ground. Okay, so the transmission of the weight is from the hand or the upper limb to the hand piece and from the hand piece to the ground. So this is how the patient is going to transfer the weight. Okay, so for transferring the weight, you need to remember that never the weight should transfer from the axilla. If this is a wrong method, if the patient is going to take all the weight from the axilla and going to transfer the weight from the axilla, this is a wrong method. Why I am showing you this? If I am going to have a little bit longer height, let me show you that. This adjustability of the length is uh, like this. Positions. 
either in standing or in lying. So in standing position you can give a wall support over here. Uh, if the patient is having the lower limb problem and there is non weight bearing or partial weight bearing is given, you can give a supported standing. If the patient can bear weight on both the legs, limbs, then uh, you can give the standing position in such a way. Now, uh, coming to the points to be considered, uh, here when you have uh, made the patient stand, you are going to take two points uh, with shoes off. We are going to take this measurement with shoes on and shoes off. This is the method which is with shoes off. Okay. So first point to consider is two inches below the axilla. So you are going to use the measure here and from the apex of the axilla, a point which is two. Uh, centimeter uh, 2 inches below the axilla. From there, a point which is 6 inches front and 2 inches lateral to the foot. Okay, so somewhere here. This is the point which is 2 inches front, uh, 6 inches front, uh, that is anterior, and 2 inches lateral to the foot. Now, a point which we have marked. 2 inches below the apex of the axilla from there this point which is 6 inches anterior and 2 inches lateral this is the actual measurement for the axillary crutch in standing shoes off now the measurement for the axillary crutch with shoes on okay in standing position uh, shoes on in standing position the first point which we are going to mark is below the apex of the axilla 5 cm down here somewhere okay and the second point which we are going to mark is 20 centimeter lateral to the heel of the shoes so from the heel of the shoes i have marked the point 20 centimeter lateral now i am going to measure from the first point which was 5 centimeter below the apex of the axilla to 20 centimeter a point 20 centimeter lateral to the heel of the shoes this is what is the measurement, which is here is a 47 inches, which is the measurement for the axillary crutch with shoes on. Now the measurement for the axillary crutch in line position with shoes off. Okay. Uh, for the measurement here, the first point is apex of the axilla. So from the apex of the axilla, the second point which we are going to take is medial measurements. Here, this is the medial meridians, okay. So, I have put my second point at the medial meridians. Uh, it is coming here around 47 inches. So, that is the measurement apex of the axilla to the medial meridians uh, for the measurement of axillary crush in line position with shoes. Now, for the measurement of the handpiece of the axillary crutch, what we are going to do is we are going to keep the elbow in 15 degrees of the flexion, slight flexion. So, 15 degrees of the flexion and you all know in the landmark, this is the ulnar spiral process, right? So, the measurement here is with 15 degrees of the elbow flexion, you are going to make a point 5 cm below the apex of the axilla, here. Below the apex of the axilla 5 cm, you are going to put a point. From there, with this elbow flexion, 15 degrees flexion, a measurement to ulnar spiral process 13 inches this is the measurement for handpiece okay so for the measurement of the handpiece remember elbow 15 degrees flexed uh, point 5 cm below the apex of the axilla from there you are going to take the measurement till the ulnar spiral process